Hi guys, welcome back. This is Sean from Play by Pause, and today we're gonna have another video comparison for you guys. The title of the day is 360 Camera. And why do we own the 360 camera? I would say the three main things I like about this type of 360 camera is it's light, it's portable, and it captures everything. So to me, it's kind of a perfect behind the scenes camera because you can rotate any how you like. Since it comes with the lock horizontal feature, which keeps your video horizontal and vertical axis even though you mount your camera off-center. Uh, some additional info, the GoPro Hero 9 with the Max Mod have the lock horizontal feature as well and comes with extra resolution and sharpness because it's a single lens action camera. So if you're into that, definitely check out the camera. In my hand, I have two 360 camera. The first is the Insta360 ONE R and the other side, I have the Insta360 ONE X. Let's start with this Insta360 ONE R. So it's a modular concept, so you can basically swap this dual 360 lens to a 4K wide angle lens or the one inch Leica system. But today we're going to just talk about the 360 system. So let's do a quick spec readout. This camera was launched in 2020. It was made with two 7.2 focal length lens with a fixed f2 aperture. It shoots 5K 30 frames per second weight 130 gram, one USB-C port, reversible touchscreen, and it's waterproof out of the box. Next, let's talk about Insta360 ONE X, which has been in the market since 2008. It was made by two 200 degree ultra wide fish under lens with fixed f2 aperture. It also shoots 5K, 30 frames per second, 30% lighter than the Insta360 ONE R, one micro USB and it's not waterproof without a dive cave. Recently, the Insta360 ONE X just released their Mark II versions. Physically, it seems promising because now it comes with a touchscreen monitor, which I believe is inspired from the Insta ONE R. It's a great feature because sometimes I feel annoying using the Mark I version because I have to go back to the apps if I'm looking for more manual settings. Anyway, let's get back to the real business. To this comparison, we're going to shoot everything in HDL video mode. So what is the HDL video mode? To keep it simple, I would say it's a high dynamic video record in a multiple exposure simultaneously. So think of it as a HDL photos but in a motion form. I believe most of people that own this Insta360 camera do not know this HDL video mode. Uh, and they are most likely used a lot if you're looking for more dynamic range. I do the same thing as well, but recently I found out that the HDL video mode can be very strong. So in this video, we're gonna show you how strong the HDL video mode is, and let's jump to the behind the scenes video. Now we are doing the audio test. We have both cameras side by side and the distance is somewhere around one arm. How does it sound? Does it sound great? Now I'm going to now I'm going to go further away. How does it 
sounds like testing one two three testing one two three testing one two three testing one two three I'm just walking around old camera you guys able to For one arm this turn. Let's try. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. How does it sound? Does it sound okay? Hello, hello. Testing one, two, three. Surprisingly, the Insta360 ONE X seems to be better than the Insta360 ONE R. And before we jump into why and how, let's talk about the similarity of both cameras. In the box, they will say 5K, and yes, it's 5K for 360 video. But in real world, you are required to crop into a desired frame and end up, it's going to be a full HD or of 4K if you zoom out more in a 16 by 9 ratio. So something to keep in mind. Next, low light. Generally, they don't perform well in low light situations because they are using a small sensor and they don't shoot 5K, 5K at the end of the day. If you're comparing to a GoPro Hero 8 or Hero 9, they might be better than these two cameras because they are using a full sensor for a 5K resolution. However, they are just using two lens for a 5K resolution. So that's a cons of using this type of 360 camera. Lastly, the post-production. Yes, you do not require to do any manual stitching since you're using this type of portable camera. But editing in post is not as easy as you thought. First off, you need to download the Insta360 Studio to process the file. In the software itself, you can either do the key point in the Insta360 software and then export it out to any desired editing software that you wish for further edits. Personally, I edit in Premiere Pro and I find this process is a bit tedious. So, I did some research and I found this official alternative from the official websites. It's a plug-in called GoPro VR Reframes. It's a very simple plug-in that works similar to the Insta360 Studio. You can basically key point and reframe your shot straight away from the Premiere Pro. Pros, user-friendly and easy to use. It's a very simple device that you just have to press and record and that's it. Second, shoot first and decide later. Um, you can pretty much capture everything using this camera and decide the frame in post since it's a 360 camera and that's it now why I think the Insta360 ONE X is better let's talk about the result based on the earlier test image quality I will give it to Insta360 ONE X in terms of sharpness and dynamic range because I felt it's much more sharper and it creates a more low contrast look which I think is better for post productions aside from my own test I do watch other comparison or YouTube review and I realized that most of them have a more sharper image for the Insta360 ONE R. My only assumptions that I believe is I've installed the latest firmware for both camera and I assume that the Insta360 company would like to reduce the noise from each camera or just the Insta360 ONE R itself by sacrificing the sharpness. Um, so this is just based on my assumption. So if you have a better answer for that, feel free to drop in the comment. I'm more than happy to read at it. Stabilize, I'll give a tie for both of these cameras. Uh, I don't see a big difference from these two cameras during the test. So they're pretty good in this. Next, built-in mic. I will give it to Insta360 ONE X. It sounds clearer and less muffled. Camera side by side and the distance is somewhere around one arm. How does it sound? It sounds great. Now I'm, going to, now I'm going to go further away 
Insta 361 are sounds muffled because of the waterproof design. In general, most of the waterproof design device don't really sound good in terms of audio recording. So something to keep in mind if you're getting a waterproof design. Next, let's talk about stitching. I would say both camera perform pretty well without a case. Uh, but the Insta 361 X has some issue with the stitching. So if you are using a venture case for your Insta 361 X, something to keep in mind. It's not a big deal, but you will encounter some issue for the stitching part. Next, usability. The key selling point of the Insta 361 R is the module design. And after using for a while, I don't think I'm a modular person because a simple task as changing battery can be quite easy using this device. It can be slightly simple if you do not have the mounting brackets, but without the mounting bracket, you do not have any screw mount below the device. So a case is kind of a must, unless you don't mind to pay extra for the boosted battery base. In the other side, the Insta 361 X, you can easily just pop in and out and it already have a screw mount built in below the device itself. Lastly, I prefer multiple device if I'm looking for a 360 camera and a wide angle camera at the same time. Let me tell you why and let me do a quick match. A uh, Insta 361 R Twins Edition costs around 530 USD with an additional 33 USD for the battery pack, so it's around 563 for the whole package. Next, Insta 361 X costs around 400 USD with an 18 USD for the battery, and lastly, you can add on the GoPro Hero 9 with an additional 399 USD. Total up is around 817 USD. I will still top up the extra U extra 250 for the options 2 because the options 2 you can get a pretty good or decent looking 360 camera and at the same time you're getting the latest wide angle action cam in the market so for my personal use I'll definitely go for options 2 but this is purely based on my personal use so I hope this video gives you a better idea for your next purchase if you're looking for a 360 camera and a wide action camera at the same time. Hope you guys like this type of content. If you do like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe our channel. And as always, remember, create, learn, and have fun. I'll see you guys in the next video.